I am just an old farmer, but the scriptures have become my delight. The insights from the book of Daniel and Revelation that we discuss today are the fruits of many years of my own study. And yet I think it is important for you to know that I am not alone in my convictions. Many others across this country now believe in these very truths. Our message is the same, for it is plain in the pages of God's word for all to read. And it is delivered with urgency because, my dear friends, the time till Christ's return is very short. Yet focus not on a simple day or hour, for while these are near, so is Christ. Know him first. Seek him first. Let us love one another. For love is from God. And those who love were born of God and know God. God shall wipe away all tears. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Nor shall there be any more pain. For those things are passed away. Ellen, you must go to bed. Father, just a few moments more. You need your rest, my dear. Come, Ellen. Let's pray. Tomorrow you will be stronger. Every morning before I open my eyes, I pray that this will be the day that I will forget about the accident. I see the morning light and it all returns. I promise you, my dear, our Heavenly Father has not forgotten you. I long for the day of what Father Miller spoke of in church. No more pain. I've never heard Jesus described as a healer before. I've heard of his wrath and his judgment, but I have never... His healing, so beautiful. <laughs> I miss the old Miller. His eyes are filled with heaven now. Yeah, and his mouth won't stop speaking about it. He doesn't drink anymore. Which I suppose leaves more for all of us. Now, who'd have thought a country farmer would become a justice of the peace and then start a religious revolution? Barnaby Larson's just returned from Britain, and he says that this doomsday idea is on every tongue in England, and it's spreading throughout Europe. You don't say. Tis true. This notion of a second coming is heard as far away as Africa and India. Yes, and the alchemists thought they could turn iron into gold. Just because there are believers does not make it so. Eight hundred and forty-three years after Christ, 
when the vision shall be fulfilled. As persuasive as you were today, our reach is not far enough. Joshua, you have the enthusiasm of a young man. It is both invigorating and irritating all at once. The inquiries pour in from every city up and down the eastern seaboard. I mean, you could preach in every church from here to the Florida Territory. Please bury me in Lowhampton next to my maple grove. Twice a day, still it would not fill the need. And see to it that my wife is provided for until the day of judgment. Well, the next step is expansion through the printed word. Publication will reach not just one set of ears, but countless eyes per page. We shall amplify your voice. Do not say, but I am a simple farmer. But I am a simple farmer. Who asked for help? Well, I had no idea it would be like this. The papers have heaped abuse of every sort upon your labors. Now we shall answer back, but on our own terms. I'm a tired old man. And I'm the owner of a printing press. about father's message. Let me see. Pride goeth before the fall. We must not let our heads swell with our own self-importance. Are those words from the Bible? Those are words from your mother. And unto 2,300 days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mr. Miller and those who listen to him suffer from a grand delusion. They claim that Jesus will return by a certain date. Yes, it's not the first time the end of the world has been prophesied by a fool, nor will it be the last. I fear, if the date passes, that a shout of infidelity will arise from the unbelievers and lead many of you astray. You see, the world is not going to end in a few short years. No, but it will end. And when it does, are you prepared, sinner? Will you stand before the wrath of a holy God as he looks upon the deeds behind which you cower and shout, depart from me, ye that works iniquity? Then shall the hellfire lap at the heels of those who turned away because of Miller's ideas. Oh, so much hotter. What is it? What's the matter? What if I have been led astray, Mother? Why would you say that? I am so afraid. Mother, the preacher said such bad things about Father Miller. Don't you listen to any of that. But I heard. We all did. We were in a house of worship. There was no comfort there. Mother says that you were quite distraught last night. 
I was taken with such fear. Brother Stockman, I know that you believe in Father Miller's teachings. Indeed, I do. As do many other Methodist ministers. When Father Miller shares the Advent hope. His urgency is tempered with love. Yet now all I can hear are the ministers who speak of burning in hell forever. What hope is there for me? For any of us? If our Heavenly Father is a tyrant who delights in eternal torment. The very agony of your mind is indication of God's Holy Spirit at work in your heart. Our God does not rejoice in your destruction. Nor is it his nature to condemn, but to seek that which is lost. How can I be so sure? Go free, Helen. Go free. Trust in Jesus. For he will not turn his back on any true seeker. Thank you, Brother Stockley. Do not thank me, Ellen. Thank the Lord Jesus. And share the Advent message with others. Elder Himes and Father Miller have announced a conference in Boston. Does Elder Himes know that Papa's sick? We sent him a letter. Greetings, friends! <laughs> well, should. cannot travel, Joshua. He cannot travel. No, 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 of course not. Typhoid is serious. It's very serious. I know you have both put great effort into this occasion. It's the first time we will all be together in the same place with common purpose. Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, all understanding the Advent is near. So you shall meet them, and then you will return and tell William all about the conference. I would like to see him, and just to give him a word of encouragement. Yeah. Well, hello, dear friend. How are you feeling today? Uh, not much better, I'm afraid. Well, then I shall leave you to Alone, for a little while. Hey, Joshua, only a few moments. He's not up to visitors. Of course, absolutely. Are you certain that you cannot ride in the carriage? I can make a marvelous bed for you in the back thick with blankets no. and the fresh air would... No, At the conference, people could come to you. I was thinking we could arrange an area. No. Joshua, this is bigger than one man. This is God's power. Hundreds of pastors have awakened. You do not need me there. Yes. Of course. You're right. It will be in my prayers. Absolutely certain. Go. Go now. <coughs> oh. Joseph Bates, as I live and breathe. How long has it been? Too long, Brother Himes, too long. <laughs> I have heard much of your work on temperance with the Christian connection, but you have made quite the name for yourself speaking on the evils of slavery as well. Am I but a humble servant, Joshua? God speaks and I obey. Ah, nonetheless, your reputation is well deserved. Is it true? Brother Miller could not make it? Yes, uh, typhoid fever. It, it is more than a shame. Oh, oh, Brother Bates, may I introduce you to Hiram Edson? Uh, you may know uh, Brother Edson through Pastor Finney. Oh, yes. 
Brother Finney's work on the causes of temperance and abolition are well known. Pleasure to meet you, sir. This is Owen Crozier. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I followed Miller's ideas since I heard him last year in New Bedford. As a sea captain, I've traveled the world, but today I was transported farther than across an ocean. I'm committing myself to the Advent message. I feel the same call. As do I. What is your name, brother? And where are you from? Samuel Snow, sir. I work for the investigator. I live here in Boston. You're not here doing an expose, are you? Uh, no, sir. Now, I will admit, I was a skeptic at first, but I have studied Miller's ideas, and I believe they hold a wonderful truth. Ah! <laughs> the conference is finished, and yet I see the discussion continues. <laughs> I was just telling these good men that I am fully committed. Well, I'm so pleased to hear it. I'll share that with Father Miller when I see him. You may also share that I will put my money into spreading the Advent message. Oh, this is momentous news! <laughs> I mean to stand behind Father Miller and his work. So the conference was a success. It came from Maine, New York City, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. So many ideas were put forth. It was a real exchange of thought and enthusiasm. And we have many pledges of financial assistance, and almost immediately we will do it again. Next time you will be a part of it, as will Joseph Bates. Bates, I recall meeting him last year. Tall fellow did not use any tobacco. Struck me as peculiar. Well, that he is, but he's going to be very important to us. We will have the resources now. More cities. More printing! Your words will touch many, many souls. Please, Joshua, remember, it is not our work, it is God's. Of course. Mr. Miller and his followers are false. Those who are seduced by his candied tongue have no place in this house of worship. So, you must, in the name of the Lord, renounce these radical ideas. If you do not, you will not be welcome here in this house of worship. You may believe you are casting us out, but Father Miller's understanding of Christ's soon return cannot be ignored. We must follow the word of God over the rule of men. We will not keep this good news quiet. And if that means we must leave, then leave we shall. My family feels an unspeakable joy at the hope of Christ's return. We feel love, the love of Jesus. It, it lifts us up, it carries us forward. And it will guide us home. How can they speak to us that way? We must not let one bad apple spoil the bushel. We'll announce their removal from fellowship next Sunday. You'll be an example. Our traditions must be honored. Oh. 
on this holy day of communion, I would leave you with a charge to love the Lord your God with all your heart, to keep all of the commandments of God, and honor him by keeping his Sabbath holy. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to him. Mother. Mother, no. If you must, but we're new here. Keep in mind that we are outsiders. Elder Wheeler will be interested in what I have to say. No. He heard what I had to say. He really listened. And will he change his day of worship from Sunday to Saturday, as the commandments suggest? He was impressed by what we shared from the Bible. Meaning? He promised that he'd give the idea much thought and he'd investigate Morning, the idea Mr. more President. fully. Hello. And from that statement, you declare victory. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is the Lord's Sabbath. That is just so. Mother. There are those who believe that waiting for the Advent and Judgment Day is mm. of greater importance than which day we worship. Perhaps the day won't matter shortly. I've planted a seed. As a teacher, my dear, you of all people should understand how knowledge grows. <sighs> I'll take your copy, lad. Well, you have to give them credit. I do look very handsome. Why do they insist on making me so fat? So, how many people do you expect? It's the largest tent ever erected on American soil. It's been expanded to seat 6,000, and they are assembling plus more. Giant tents, what next? I'm the last person on Earth who saw this coming. I think you were one of the first. We must be on our way. There is a smaller meeting taking place. I wish to stop there first. But the giant tent, we are expected there. Joshua, the world is filled with expectations now. Not everything follows an exact plan. I told Brother Bates I would join him. But he should be at the big tent, too. Whoa, whoa. I'm looking for Joseph Bates. Do you know where I might find the meeting? It is true. 1843 has now passed. Many of you grow anxious. You ask why our Savior has not returned and want to know when will be our blessed hope. I can only tell you that it is in these times that our faith is tested. When I was the captain of a ship at sea, we didn't throw ourselves into the ocean in anguish during a storm. No, we held fast to the moorings. We called all hands on deck. Even now, brothers and sisters, let us not despair or redouble our effort. The bridegroom cometh. We do not labor in vain. Yes. We had hoped that by now our blessed day would have come. And yet these final moments are our most precious. Let my brother speak. He comes to us with news. Brother Snow has truth for us from the Lord. Let him come and deliver his message. Our blessed Lord has promised us he will come again to take his people unto himself. Now, when Jesus came the first time, the Gospels tell us 
The time was fulfilled. What time was fulfilled? Prophetic time. Indeed. Indeed. Historians confirm that Christ died in the spring of AD 31, precisely in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. Now the Bible shows us that spring is the Passover event. The Day of Atonement comes in autumn. And what did the high priest do on the Day of Atonement? He cleansed the sanctuary. Exactly. Thank you, Brother White. He cleansed the sanctuary. Does it not then follow that he will return to cleanse the sanctuary on that precise Day of Atonement? Yes. Leviticus says the biblical Day of Atonement falls on the 10th day of the seventh month. Brethren, we were wrong to expect Christ's return by the spring. According to the Jewish calendar, the 10th day of the seventh month falls this year on October 22nd. We know the date. October 22nd, 1844. Wonderful! He is so certain. And you are not? Setting an exact date is foolish. No, not now, brother. We, we are not in favor here. Let us hope that God will reveal more in time. Dear Brother Himes, after much study and prayer, I see a glory now in the seventh month, which I never saw before. Obey his word and believe. There is no time for delay. Put it not off, I beg of you. No, not for a moment. God's message was never meant to be about a single date. Why was I so weak to endorse one? Look at the movement you have begun. You have won thousands. And to what, Brother Himes, have I won them? Disappointment, despair. 